welcome to Phineas again. Today's topic of our discussion is Risk and Return Analysis using Excel. This whole activity is divided into two parts. In the first part or in today's video lecture, we'll discuss the single asset analysis using Excel. And in the second part, I'll be discussing the portfolio analysis using Excel. What's the objective of this activity? The objectives are to teach how to calculate the return of a single asset or a single stock return of a portfolio of financial securities, risk of a single stock, risk of a portfolio of financial securities. Then the second objective is how to apply the sharp ratio for portfolio selection. And the last objective is how to determine an optimum portfolio. But before we move forward, kindly subscribe to my channel Phineas and press the bell icon for the notification of new videos. So let's start today's discussion of risk and return of a single stock analysis. So before we move forward, let's discuss the requirements of this project. What we will do, we'll select at least three companies because we'll be constructing a portfolio. So in today's lecture, in today's video, I'll tell you the single stock analysis, but in the upcoming video, I'll be doing the portfolio analysis. So for that, I'll be needing at least three companies. So I'll be selecting three companies. What we'll do, we'll collect the closing prices of all three companies. Let's assume we'll, we'll select the data, we'll collect the data for the last three months. Then what we'll do, we'll calculate the individual stocks return and risk. This is the first part. In today's video, we'll discuss these or we'll perform these three activities. Once we'll move forward in the second part or in the second video, what we'll do, we'll calculate the portfolio and returns or we'll call it equally weighted portfolio returns and then we'll identify our optimum portfolio for a risk averse investors. Okay, so what we'll be calculating in these two videos. First, we'll calculate the return in rupees. Then the expected return or an average return or we can call it a rate of return for a single asset and a portfolio. Then the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation which represents the risk of a single stock and a portfolio. Then the correlation or correlation coefficient. Then we'll calculate the beta of a single stock or the portfolio which is the sensitivity and ultimately we'll calculate the sharp ratio to identify the best or the optimum portfolio. These are the formulas I have given over here which we'll be using for single asset analysis and portfolio analysis for your guidance. So these formulas belongs to single asset analysis and the remaining formulas are for portfolio analysis. And do remember I'll be using three months tables as risk fee rate for sharp ratio. These are the suggested websites for to download the data because I'm working on Pakistani companies. So I'll be using these websites. You can use any other website to download the equity market data. Let's assume I need to download the review. For, for example, I'm clicking on this website. Once I click on this website, the browser will open the website of this organization. Now what I need to do, see over here, the company tab is given. What I'll do, I'll, I'll select the company. If I click on this, it asks me which company I need. For example, I'm collecting data of Atak Summit Pakistan Limited. What's the date range? So you can select any date range. For example, I'm collecting data from 1st April till 21st April. Where is 21st April? This is 21st April. Around 21 day, days data. Now I'll click on this view prices. Once I'll click on these view prices, so you can see the 21st April data is over here. Then the, in the last row, it says 1st April data. Let me arrange this from 1st till the 21st. Now what I need to do, I need to select this data. I'll select this data with the help of my mouse. I'll copy this and then I'll put this data into my Excel sheet. This is my Excel sheet. I have pasted my data over here. Now what I need to do, I'll, I'll delete unnecessary columns and rows. So let me delete all unnecessary columns and rows. What we need, we only need the date, date column and the closing price column. So I'll delete all the extra columns over here. So in this way, I have deleted all the columns. Now what we need, the first requirement is if I'll take back you to this sheet to so the first requirement or what we the first thing that we need to calculate the total return in rupees and the formula for total return in rupees is amount received minus amount invested. What is amount received? When we say amount received, amount received means the selling price and amount invested means the buying price of the stock. This current date will be considered as your selling price and the preceding day price of the stock will be considered as the buying price. Why we are assuming this? Because if you'll purchase, if you have purchased the stock in the preceding date, then only you'll be able to sell the stock in today's date. So this is my 
selling price or this will be considered as my amount received and this will be my amount invested so how to calculate return in rupees so let me write return in rupees over here so this is return in rupees so what i'll do i'll, I'll leave this first cell blank because i don't have the preceding price of this date so i cannot cal calculate the return at this date do remember you cannot write zero over here why because if zero has a meaning which means the return of this day is zero which means the today's price and the preceding day price was equal so you cannot write zero over here you will you'll leave this cell blank i'll start from 2nd april my 2nd april price was 99.11 rupees and my preceding day price which means the 1st april price was 92.2 I'll, I'll select this and then i'll enter i'll drag this till the bottom or i'll double click on this so now you can see the returns of the change are over here now the next thing that we need to calculate is again come back to this the expected return or the average return do remember these are not considered as expected returns these will be average returns or the rate of return why i am saying this the reason is expected returns are always calculated on forecasted data over here we are using the historical data so for this reason we call them average return or we will call it a rate of return so what i am trying to calculate now i am trying to calculate the rate of return rate of return and this is rate of return is technically or we can say that expected return is this rate of return in this case so how to calculate rate of return so the formula for rate of return is if you see this formula so the formula says amount received which is this minus amount invested divided by amount invested so where is my amount received so this current day price will be considered as my amount received and preceding day price will be considered as amount invested so now what i need to do equals to amount received sorry bracket open amount received minus amount invested bracket closed divided by amount invested which is 92.2 now if i'll enter this so i'll get what rate of return for that day the other technique or the other method for this is because we have already calculated the change to divide this amount by the preceding day price so you see if you'll see the both values are same and the other method for calculation of this rate of return is current price divided by preceding day price so what i'll say equals to bracket open current price divided by preceding day price minus one this will give you the same answer so see all three columns are giving me the same answer let me delete these two columns because these, these two columns are irrelevant for us now again what i'll do I'll, I'll double click on this it will copy the formula in the whole column so this is what this is my rate of return per day rate of return so what we are trying to calculate the first thing that we need to calculate is average return yeah expected rate of return or we can call it rate of return so the first thing that we are trying to calculate is rate of return or average rate of return the second thing that we will calculate is variance of a single asset then we will calculate the standard deviation of a single asset and the last thing that we will calculate is coefficient of variation which is cv so in today's discussion we will calculate the rate of return variance of a single asset standard deviation of a single asset and coefficient of a single asset so let me calculate the rate of return or the average rate of return of a single asset to so see this what's the formula for average rate of return the formula is return or summation of returns divided by number of observations so where is the where are the returns these are my returns so what i need to do i need to, to take the summation so uh, in this way i can take the summation this this is the summation now what i'll do i'll calculate the average rate of return so for return i'll be using k and i'll write k average or we can call it k bar k average is equals to this value which is the summation of all the returns divided by number of observation so if you how many number of observations we have so let me check how many observations we have we have around 14 observations see over here this count has given which is 14 observation so i'll say is equals to summation of all returns divided by 14 observations and this way we can calculate the average rate of return now let me use this average rate of return here yeah, let me calculate the average rate of return by using a built-in function in excel and that function is called average a v r a g e average you'll type average bracket open you'll select all the values or the range of rate of return and then you'll press enter so see both the values are same so let me tell you one important thing instead of writing 14 over here if i write a built-in function which is called count in excel so it will make our life little easy in in the future what i'll do i'll write count bracket open i'll select my values 
I'll I'll leave this first value because we haven't calculated the return of the first value. Bracket close. See the value is same. 0.0251. Now let's calculate the. This is what this is our average rate of return. Now let's move to the next part. That is the variance of the single asset. So now what we are trying to calculate variance of a single asset. Now let's check the formula of how to calculate variance manually. This is the formula to calculate variance manually. This formula says KI which are individual asset return. These are the individual situations returns minus average return or K bar which is this value divided by n minus one and before dividing this value by n minus one, you need to take the square root of the whole value by taking the summation. So let me calculate this manually. What I'll do, I'll, I'll say bracket open k minus what I'm trying to do k minus k bar or k average bracket close. Then I'll take the square of this value. So I've written k minus k bar the whole square. Where is my ki? So my ki is this value. So I'll say bracket open ki minus where's my k bar? So this is my k bar bracket close power 2. In this way, I'll be able to calculate k minus k bar whole square. Now what, what I need? I need to take the summation of this. So I'll take the summation of this. Then the next thing is variance. What I need? This divide by n minus 1 because in the formula, the formula says it's n minus 1. So we have around 14 observations. 14 minus 1 is 13. So instead of writing 13 over here, what I'll do, I'll again apply this count function. So I'll say bracket open count this range bracket close minus 1. Let me calculate variance with the built in function over here equals to variance. Now if you'll see over here, there are two formulas for variance. There are two functions for variance. Variance.p and variance.s. We'll be using variance.s because it's a sample data. So I'll say variance.s bracket open. I'll select the returns and then I'll close the bracket. So this is the variance. Now if you'll observe, the val values of variance are not matching over here. The val value of variance that I've calculated manually and the value of variance that I've calculated with the help of the built-in function is different. So now we need to identify where is the mistake. This value is incorrect. This value is incorrect. Why I am saying this? Because if you see this formula, if you check this formula, I have intentionally done this mistake. If I will press F2, I will be able to check the formula. So this formula says Ki means this value minus this value whole square. This formula is correct. But if you will click or if you will check the formula of the next cell, so this says D4 minus D20. When you will move forward downward, so your formula will also change the cell references. This is called relative referencing. So what we need to do, we need to fix this cell, which is D19. So how to fix this value? So what I need to do, I'll again go back to this formula or to this cell, which is E3. I'll press F2 and then over here at D19, what I'll do, I'll, I'll click at D19 and then I'll press F4. This press F4 will add dollar sign with it. What this dollar signs are representing, dollar signs will fix this reference or fix the cell's reference. So in this way, I'll be able fix this cell. Now if I'll double click on this, so the whole formula will have this fixed cell. See this D19 is fixed for every cell now. If you randomly check, the whole formula is fixed. So now see the variance is matching. The variance that I've calculated manually and the variance that we have calculated with the help of formula or the built-in function is same. Now let's move to the standard deviation. So the next target is standard deviation. What is standard deviation? So the formula for standard deviation says that ki minus k bar whole square divided by n minus 1 which is the formula for variance but we need to take the under root of this formula to calculate the standard deviation. As we have already calculated the variance so we can easily calculate the standard deviation by using sqrt function bracket open. I will select the variance value and then I will close this bracket so I will be able to calculate the standard deviation of this stock. Now let me calculate the standard deviation with the built-in function. I will press equals to this built-in function is std dot std ev again you will see it says point p and point v again we will be using point s because it's a sample data so i'll say point s bracket open i'll select the returns and then i'll close the bracket this will give me the standard deviation to so see both the standard deviations are same now the last thing that we need to calculate is coefficient of variation so what is coefficient of variation it tells you the per unit rest the formula for coefficient of variation is 
this formula says or this formula sheet says that the coefficient of variation is equals to sigma or the standard deviation of individual stocks divided by the k bar or the average return of an individual stock or rate of return of an individual stock. So where is my k bar or rate of return? So this is my rate of return and this is my standard deviation or over here this is my rate of return and this is my standard deviation. So let me calculate the coefficient of variation sigma divided by average which is 1.59 and if I calculate the same coefficient of variation over here, so I'll say sigma divided by variance. So this is also 1.59. So see, if you'll manually calculate, so you'll calculate like this, the way I've calculated over here. And if you'll be using the formulas or the built-in functions, so you can calculate the returns of individual stocks, variance of an individual stock, standard deviation of the coefficient of individual stocks in this way. So this is about a single asset. What I'll do, I'll, I'll rename this sheet. I'll say this is what? This was Atak Cement Pakistan Limited, so I'll write ACPL. This is for a single asset or for a single security. In this way, you can calculate returns for hundreds of securities and you can increase the data as well. Let me calculate return for one more asset or one more security. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll click on this sheet, right click and then I'll say move or copy. And in the move and copy, if you'll see over here, this says create a copy. I'll click on this and then I'll press OK. This will create a duplicate copy of this ACPL sheet. I'll drag it to on the right hand side. I'll rename for example, now I'll be collecting data for ABL, be bank, Allied Bank Limited. So I'll write ABL. Now if you'll see over here, the name of the sheet is ABL, but the data is for ACPL, that is at a uh, Summit Pakistan Limited. What I'll do, I'll, I'll delete these two columns. Now what I'll do, I'll, I'll go back to this website. So let's collect the data of ABL, ABL, Allied Bank Limited, I'll click on Allied Bank Limited, the data uh, date range will remain same, then I'll click view prices, then I'll again collect this or I'll select this whole data, I'll copy it and then I'll again go to my Excel sheet. Now I will not paste data over here, just be careful, I'll, what I'll do, I'll open a new sheet and I'll paste this data over here, then what I'll do, I'll again delete the unnecessary information or unnecessary cells and columns. What I need, I just need the closing balance and the dates. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll collect this closing balance and date information. I'll go to the CBL sheet and then I'll paste data over here. You'll see in the in the ACPL, one day information was extra. I'll, I'll delete this last row as well. Because the formula is applied on this Excel sheet. So what I've done, I've just added my data or I've just entered the data of ABL and this sheet has automatically calculated everything. So this is the benefit of calculating returns with the help of Excel. But I must tell you one thing. If you remember, I use this count function over here in this ACPL sheet. Why I've used this count function here? What's the benefit of this count function? The benefit of this count function is because over here, the total observation is 13 and the total observation in ACPL was 14. So if I've used 14 or if I would have typed 14 over there, so in this form, in this ABL case, uh, over here it would have been written 14 which would create an error in your calculation. So if with the help of this count function what, what this sheet is doing it is automatically counting the number of observations in this sheet. Similarly for variance as well we have used this count function. So what this count function is doing the total observation minus 1. But in ACPL it was 14 but in this case it was 13. So 13 minus 1 it's 12 but in that in the ACPL case it was 14 or the observations were 14. See? Over here the 14 observation but in ABL the observations are or the returns are for 13 days. So in this way we can calculate the returns of individual assets and the risk of an individual asset. I hope you have understood how to calculate the risk and return of an individual asset. In this way you can calculate return for any company for a for any period of time. I hope you have understood today's lecture. If you have any query you can write in the comment section. I'll, I'll try my level best to answer your queries. That's it from my side. Take care. Bye.